coming at you lo-fi from the underground. Kind of like Ice Cube and Johnny Mnemonic, except we don't have a badass dolphin that's cybernetic. I am a badass dolphin. I know, we need to work on that. But yeah, this is super low-tech video for recommendations for the week of the 20th of February. Our video monkey is recreating AWOL. somewhere. A wall. He is gone. He will be punished. He escaped out of his cage somehow. We figured out how to uh, pick his lock, but um, we'll make sure. You know, we're gonna upgrade the security More next chains. time. That's right. We're gonna get the dolphin on that security shit. Definitely. All right. So starting off this week, Marvel Comics Nova number one by Jeff Loeb and McGinnis. Um, this is kind of a precursor to the big Guardians of the Galaxy thing in that it's starting, you know, deep Marvel's uh, another big jump into the whole space world. Um, and this has got a new Nova. Uh, I think it's um, his kid, right? Uh, no. No? It's a uh, new Nova who is the son of a man who claims to have been a member of the Nova Corps. Claims to, have been. claims to have been but you got Rocket Raccoon in here you've got all sorts of cool beastly Nova Corps members um, Ed McGinnis is doing a great job on the art it's got a real kind of like uh, anime manga style like his old stuff used to but it's not just big Hulk people which is you know I like his big Hulk people but well, you know yeah what are you gonna do but yeah uh, Jeff Loeb's right Nate and uh, yeah so well, looks really cool should be fun really fun all ages stuff right all there all ages yeah definitely and we've got a beginning over there. We've got an ending of sorts over in DC's Batwoman. This is the final issue for the foreseeable future that has art duties by J.H. Williams. Sadness. He will remain on the title to write, but this is the last time we're going to see all his amazing double-page spreads and giant higher goodness. Until Sandman comes out in, like, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> um, another final issue, and this is a serious, serious moment of silence and sadness. This is the end of Hellblazer, Vertigo's longest running title, um, and next to Cerebus, the longest running comic that I've ever seen. 300 issues, never stopped from 1988. Never retitled, never, never canceled, retitled, never, never restarted. Canceled, nothing. This is not Constantine, this is Hellblazer. Difference. Written by Peter Milligan, art by Giuseppe Comunicoli. Uh, this is, it's, it's, it, this is a book that if you haven't been reading it, if you don't know what Hellblazer is, get on your back issues, read some friggin' Hellblazer, Alan Moore created them, Shut Up and Swamp Thing, the greatest mage to ever live. And Jamie Delano did an amazing Jamie first Delano. run on him. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, Hellblazer. Yeah. Pretty much any Vertigo writer worth of salt has had a run on Hellblazer. Yep, without a doubt. And also from DC, another new beginning of sorts. The first issue with Keith Giffen on returning to Art Dewey's on Legion of Superheroes. And Keith Giffen and Legion of the Superheroes can only mean one thing. Amazing comic books. Yo. Absolutely amazing. He's pulling the Promethean Giants from Jack Kirby's for Fourth World. Yes. He is smashing Legionnaires' heads with massive pieces of machinery. He is having, like, cyborg ghost people, like... Computer ghosts. It's amazing. It's, he's pulling out all the stops there. Yeah, yeah. This book has finally, finally found its direction after the reboot. Finally, yeah. It's injecting much needed life into into that. Um, from Image, we got more Phantom Variants for Revival. This is that kind of rural noir by uh, Tim Seeley and Mike Norton. Um, but yeah, it's Phantomy. The Variants. Look, oh, they're gone already. Wow. And. Over out of IDW, more My Little Pony for you. Because we know that you need My more. Little Pony micro series number one. Because an ongoing was not enough. You no. demanded more. You more. asked for this. And, this is and you got it. It's written by uh, Tom. I don't know if the art's by him, but uh, it's at least written by Tom Zoller of Love and Capes. Uh, sort of long running yeah. superhero sitcom well, type yeah, series. Should, should work well for that. But yeah, you know, do you really care who's writing it? No, it's not. No, you ponies. just want ponies. That's right, ponies. 
another uncollected Vertigo gem this week. This is Animal Man, uh, Volume 4, picking up the numbering from the uh, Grant Morrison run. And this is the uh, little-known Peter Milligan stuff that, uh, you know, how do you, how do you follow up after Grant Morrison? Well, you give it to Peter Milligan, who's as insane and psych psychotic and psychedelic, but more twisted. He's a bit kind of a slower burn, um, but yeah, it's got uh, Steve or uh, Steve Dillon doing art, Tom Veach, Chaz Truog. Uh, but yeah, this is just fantastic '90s Vertigo stuff. Um, really, really classic and fun. And hopefully that this is the start of the rest of the series being traded up because Jamie Delano did a bunch of great stuff for it, um, which Jeff Lemire pulled a lot for the new run, uh, that whole red thing. So, but yeah, very, very cool, classic Vertigo. And a new number one for DC, Justice League of America, number one. See this flag-flying group of badasses here? They're your new Justice League, and you're gonna like them. This is seriously shaping up to be some awesome, like, kick-ass stuff from Jeff Johns. Like, it looks very noirish. Everybody's yeah, everything's actually, like really Dave dark. Finch is playing up yeah. the moodiness in this. Yeah, yeah. And I am just personally so excited for another uh, team book out of Jeff Johns because he has done so much good work on this stuff. He's got Stargirl back in here. He loves Stargirl. Yeah. He's bound to at least put like 20% more effort than all his other books. <laughs> I know, right? Just because because that's of his that. baby. Absolutely. Yeah, Stargirl was the first thing that he, that he broke into DC Comics with. So. From Marvel, we have the return of Alpha, which was Spider-Man short-lived sidekick um who humberto ramos and dan slot created uh this has got uh this is by joshua fialkov and art by nuno plati who did um backups in the marvel ultimate spider-man uh kids book which had a really great manga feel to it and this is this the real reason i'm picking this is the art is absolutely astounding he did the colors um i i wish there were scans to show you but i'm just you know not really uh but yeah it's got a really great uh, kind of indie comics vibe along with almost like a Saturday morning cartoon but like Adult Swim Saturday morning cartoon. And um, basically Alpha's trying to get his powers back so he doesn't get food thrown at him at lunch and shit. Um, and yeah, but it seems very cool. This is more like great, you know, early Peter Parker, Spider-Man, high school drama, stuff like that. Very, very cool art though. Right. And we also have a reprint of Todd, the ugliest kid on earth. Number one, because you all wanted to buy number two, but you couldn't find this oh-so-precious first issue. So we got more for you. More. Yeah, more. it's really great, kind of like post apocalyptic chew kind of horror, you know, with really great art by M.K. Perker. It's very, very funny. It looks very, very weird. I mean, look at the people on the cover. Well, you can't. There's no scans. <laughs> <laughs> Is it time? Uh, did, did you do Green Lantern Corps? Yeah, you did. Oh, no, no, you did. No, it's no, no, it was you. All right, we've also got out of D.C., Green Lantern New Guardian number 17. This is part three of the Wrath of the First Lantern crossover, which parts one and two are also running in Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core this week. This has the ancient, extremely evil First Lantern coming back and pretty much just tearing apart the lives of every single member of the Green Lantern Core. Yeah. This has absolutely phenomenal art from Aaron Cooter. So amazing. We've talked about him a few times before. Um... He was supposed to have, like, a consistent run on this title, but they put him on, like, one issue, and then they had another guy, and then they had him doing half an issue, but he's doing all the art in this one, yeah. and his layouts are amazing. The he, figure work that he's pulling off, so yeah, cool. Yeah, it really reminds me of, like, Chris Burnham a little bit, but mm -hmm. not as, like, quietly squishy, you know? His faces aren't quite as squishy, it's, it's a, really good. It's a bit of heat, whereas uh, Chris Burnham kind of does, like, compact figures, uh... Aaron Cooters are more long. They're yeah, just kind of yeah, like, more proportional. Whoa. Yeah. All stretchy and stuff. They are very stretchy. And last week we brought you Giant Alex Toth. This week we bring you an equally oh. large book. <sighs> Teen Titans, Jeff Johns, everything in one volume. Yeah, it's 150 bucks, but that's cheaper than buying all the trades. There is literally, I think... 50 or so comics in here, at least. Um, this is back when Jeff Johns was just, everything he touched was gold, and he basically took the Teen Titans from a really, really sad, sad state that had they, forgotten 
the the th- the the rules set down by Wolfman and Perez that made the new Teen Titans. The nineties were a so hard great. time they, for they, everyone. They, they were, they were. But this is really where I mean, if you've been enjoying the new Young Justice cartoon, this is where all that comes from. This was the reintroduction of Superboy into not a jackass, <laughs> into a lovable jackass. You had uh, Bart Allen as Kid Flash. You had Ms. Martian. You had Cyborg, um, Wonder Girl. I mean, everything that I love about superheroes and about legacy and about the DC Universe is basically presented in this one book. In this tome this here. This tome. Yeah, Mike McCone started doing the art, um, and then there was uh, Tony Daniel, Tom Grummet. There's even a couple of Rob Liefeld issues. You can flip through those. They yeah, don't really that happened. Matter. But they're there, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it brought it back to teenagers dealing with problems, dealing with the fact that when you want to sneak out and do something, Batman's going to bust you. Batman, and he's always gonna bust you because he's friggin' Batman. So you have to be smarter than Batman. Or you just, you know, not steal the Batmobile. Or you just not steal the Batmobile, but you know what? That would work, too. Bart doesn't listen. No. He's very impulsive. No, he doesn't. Very Uh, impulsive. I see what you did there. Yeah. Nice. That's right. Very clever. Uh, But yeah, so Teen Titans, I'm gonna block Morgan with that. Oh, all this hype. Just big. Um, yeah, so that's about it. We apologize again for the low-techness. The Video Monk will be back next week, and we'll be in shiny color.